Hey, my name is Muhammad Hakim Yusuf. Today, I'm going to explain to you about what is really recession. Hi, my name is Amir, and I'm going to explain about why we face recession this year. Hi, my name is Azimim Binti Mahmoud. I'm going to suggest the solution for this year's recession. Hi, I am Fadila. I am going to explain to you on the effects of recession 2020. First, I'm going to introduce to you what is recession. Recession is defined as major contraction of economic growth. It is less severe than the depression as depression is a prolonged recession. The thing that difference is depression it happens continuously for a longer time period. As we know, recession happens for a certain period. This will affect the country GDP, GNP, company's profit, and also increasing the unemployment. So next is the history of recession. The first wave is in 1970 until 1989, which is the government of Latin America's country were highly in debt as they want to develop the country. The second wave is quite different as the cause was the private sector, which is the bank. This caused the recession toward developing countries including Malaysia. This crisis is also known as Asian Financial Crisis. The third wave, which happens from 2002 until 2009, it involves the price drop of real estate at the peak of recession during 2007 and 2008, especially in the United States. So now, the fourth wave Possibly, it's because of the COVID-19 coronavirus pandemic. Most of countries affected has been locked down and the economic sector is working at minimum force. Now, let's move on on the factor of recession. This recession also been called as the Great Lockdown because many countries around the world is now having a lockdown due to the coronavirus. This lockdown is the sole factor of why we are now facing with recession. This virus started in Wuhan, China and has spread across the globe such as Italy, Turkey, America, Malaysia and many more countries. Until 29th April, there are about 3 million cases of people who have been infected and about 235,000 people who have cured from it. This virus spread through small droplets from a person with COVID-19 when they are coughs or sneezes. Besides, these droplets also can land on objects and stays there. It will spread when people touch the object. This is why it is important for people to practice social distancing and always wash their hands regularly. To break the chain of this virus, many countries enforce the lockdown and this force people to work from home. But there are certain sectors facing with the bankruptcy, such as airlines, oil and gas, and tourism, as these sectors cannot get any customers. China's GDP shrank by 6.5% for the first three months this year due to the lockdown. Its revenue predicted to drop from $117 million to $78 million this year, and about 25.6% people in tourism sector is facing with unemployment. We can see how economy in China been affected because of lockdown. That's why there are certain people protest the lockdown as they do not want to put their economy in risk. And now let's move on on the effects of recession. Due to lockdown, the demand for oil decreased globally by 30%. This made country like Russia and Saudi is facing hard time as 44% of oil demand is used for transportation. This will lead to a drop in price of oil as supply is more than demand. Since that, Saudi, as the leader of OPEC, 
asked for Russia to drop their production as Saudi agree to drop their production by 1 million barrel per day so that the oil price can be stable again. However, Russia disagree with it. It is because Russia, they want America to win in oil market as America is at the top in production of oil, which is 11 million barrel per day for America, 10.8 million barrel per day for Russia, and 10.2 million barrel per day for Saudi. Besides, the amount to make per barrel for Russia is the lowest, which is $42 per barrel, while it will cost America $52 to make every barrel and $82 for Saudi. If Russia lower down their production, their customer will seek America and buy all from them. Through this war of oil price, we can see Russia have their own political agenda. Malaysia are reported to face a higher unemployment rate due to an implementation of Movement Control Order MCO since 18 March 2020. Since MCO was implemented, many services and industry, including business, public sector and private sector, has been directed to shutdowns temporarily and limiting their operating hours. They are requested to work from home and they need to avoid physical contact. But not all jobs could be performed at home. This will definitely lead to unemployment because these people are not able to perform their job from home due to some barriers. On 22 April 2020, the Executive Director of Malaysian Employers Federation, MEF, has come out with a statement that MEF estimated that unemployment rate in Malaysia could reach up to 13% this year. This is significantly higher than Bandagara's expectation for the rate to rise to 4%. This is because most industries are seen to lose their profits. Petronas has decided to shut down 14 rigs out of 18 active rigs as the oil price now is down. This situation will require Petronas to retrench some of their employees. The airlines industry as well will be affected due to the closure of national border entrance and strict controls on tourism. The airlines industry in Malaysia are expected to lose almost 122.67 billion this year. Due to the loss, it will make the company unable to pay for the employee's salary. Due to COVID-19 pandemic, most countries in the world have shut down their manufacturing sector to prevent the spread of the virus. When China shut down their manufacturing sector, this will cause problems to the entire world as well. It is because one-third of all products in the world were made in China as China is the global supply chain of the world. Therefore, because of the supply chain slowdown, we have seen many large companies experience slowdown in their sales and revenue, including in Malaysia manufacturing sector. That thing really makes sense because if they do not have any products to sell, they cannot make any sales and cannot gain profit. If this situation are going to be the same for the next 6 months and afterward, we tend to see things like layoffs and bankruptcies. Apart from that, we will also see the rise and fall in market price as the effect of changes in market equilibrium. Recession 2020 will give a different effect in political scenario in Malaysia. As the major factor is the coronavirus pandemic, we could see that most of the politicians from various political parties trying their best to contribute to the nation. They help those are affected by the COVID-19. They give some money and provide food and some other basic necessities to the people. When everyone take part and unite in order to help those affected by COVID-19, this will lower the potential of facing unstable political scenario as everyone's priority and focus now is 
on how to ensure Malaysia free from COVID-19. Lockdown will affect the entertainment industry, especially those events that involve a large gathering, such as concert, sports tournament, comedy shows, and others. There are many football match, Olympic games, and concerts had to be postponed, or the worst is to be cancelled. It is all to prevent the spread of the COVID-19. This will continue to give a huge impact to the other sector related, such as broadcaster, ticket booking company, and hotel company. The hotel company in Malaysia are saying to face loss until 70 million Malaysia ringgit up to 6 months. Malaysian Association of Hotel, MAH, said that there are 170,000 bookings have been cancelled. If this situation are continues to worse until December 2020, the loss are expected to increase up to 130 million Malaysia ringgit. Now, we will discuss on the initiative to overcome recession. The first initiative is by implementing proactive policy. Do you know what is monetary policy? It is when the recession threatens, the central bank will use expansionary policy to increase money supply, increase of loan, reduce interest rate, and shift aggregate demand to the right. What is fiscal policy? Fiscal policy is a microeconomic policy to adjust aggregate demand by using either government spending or taxation policy. The next initiative is by lowering the interest rate. Banking sectors lower the interest rate which to focus on high loan quality, low external debt and significant current surplus. This is to encourage borrowing and investing to stimulate economic growth. Abundance of investors will gear up the economy and consume to increase gross domestic product of the country. As interest rates are a key link in the economy between investor and saver, finance and real economic activities, at the same time investors also desire policy certainty when they enjoy investing here. The third initiative to prevent from recession is government should come up with stimulus package. Due to COVID-19 pandemic, Prihatin package was introduced by the government to cover the ease and the need of the people and then act as financial support to them. Financial support to the small and medium enterprise SME will also be beneficial as they can help to remain resilient in the face of economic pressure. Other than that, the organization of the petroleum exporting countries also play important role in preventing from recession. Research and development in petroleum industry can increase the productivity and preventing from mitigate risk to remain profitable and carry out more input as recession may come from this unstable global oil price. By controlling the global oil price at the standard level, it will less the possibility to face recession as the most economic revenue is depend on the global oil price. In conclusion, recession will cause a lot of problem to a country. But as far as we can see, the Prime Minister of Malaysia, Tan Sri Mohidin Yassin, provided a lot of help in many ways to the people. That's all from us. That's all from us. That's all from us. That's all from us. Thank you for watching our video. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.